Nimbus. The space gate to dark world is charged up and now open. Welcome back, Twitch, YouTube. It's your boy, KDZ, bringing you guys another market watch. And again, guys, the reason why we do these videos is because I have a I'm talking about trading card games, and I want to continue to build a community that has that same love and passion for admiring all those gorgeous lore windows as I do. And with that, let's get into it. Of course, guys, we left off yesterday on Triple Tactics, the two Triple Tactics cards, the cards, um, because of the current, um, I think it was YCS Bokum, I think that's happening right now. But yeah, currently it is the finals, and it's um, Riga San Avalon versus Vanquish So, which I'm not surprised. Like I said, I, I knew it wasn't going to be fun to read. I knew it wasn't going to be Unchained. That was going to be top in this um, YCS because things just happen differently in Europe. I'm not too surprised about the Riga. The Riga, though, is interesting because I would think that people would start side decking for this deck, considering how powerful it is. I'm not sure if you guys have actually ever played against the deck, but I talked about it probably like a week, a week and a half ago. I talked about how I played it on uh, Master Duel and how it's really powerful. Um, it can do a lot of things. And it was one of the cards, the Rika Con Con. Well, let's just go to Rika overall. Rika. Um, Rika Glamour. Rika Con Con, right here. This super rare out of powered elements. This is what breaks the deck. It's a card that came out two years after the first wave of Rika um, cards released. And like I said, this is what breaks the deck. And it got a reprint in the current 2023 Megatons, and they did not upgrade it to Prismatic Secret Rare, which is, I have no idea why they did, did that. I, what did they, they made it a common. They made it a common, this card that breaks the deck, but it allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters for the effects of your Rika cards. And you can do it once per turn. And essentially that's two tributes of your opponent's monsters. Um, in two turns, which is a really tough interruption, because not only do you get the interruption of the reason why you tributed it for cost, um, but you get the interruption of the monster being tributed. <laughs> Looking at the market price, the Rika Con Con, 174 listings as low as 10 cents, market price 36 cents. Yeah, uh, for some reason, there just hasn't. I mean, some of these other cards have shown some staying power, like Rika Glamour, 45 listings, was all 750, mark price 695. That was like always, or Teardrop the Rika Queen. This was always the money card, 58 listings, was all 570, mark price 588 for the Super Rare. And then Rika Petal, 36 listings, as low as 640, mark price 475 for the Super Rare. Rika Petal. Enrica Queen Strand, and this is actually another important card in the strategy. Ultra Rare coming out of Rise of the Duelist. I think that's a max rarity for the Ultra Rare. Yeah, it got a common in the tens. Um, 55 listings as low as 298, mark price 312. So a lot of interesting value here for the Rika cards. And then there's also uh, the Gallanter was used at a Lightning Overdrive. The Gallanter. <laughs> That direct by TCG listing is off. This was a solid dollar card, guys. Like it was a legit dollar. About a year ago, before like Rika started to show, before um, uh, what is it called? Yeah, before the Rika and Avalon deck really started to take off, this was like a dollar card, and it spiked up higher. As you can see, it's coming down. It spiked up higher than the four dollars it's at right now. But still currently sitting at four, does not have a reprint. Original print secret rare coming out of Lightning Overdrive, Link Four, um, Link Four Cross Link Arrows. I feel like the Cross Link Arrows are extremely unique and powerful for Link Fours. And then the Link Arrows that um, um, Appaloosa has for Link Fours, three, three bottom, one top. But still only a $4 card for the Gallancer. There's many other different plant strategies that you can use. Um, I'm surprised it's actually not worth more considering it's a 
original print. We're going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit on uh, Big Allen's Red Lightning Overdrive. What was looking at before that? Oh, that's what it was. It was going to be Sun Avalon because that's another thing that's used with it. Um, but looking at Lightning Overdrive over here, 23 listings as well as 49.72 market price, 58.20 for the first edition boots of boxes. We wanted to go into that. See if that's legit. A couple interesting things here, particularly with the Starlight Rares. You actually have Black Rose Dragon Starlight Rares, market price under Line of the Light Charmer, Lustrous's market price significantly. And there's 47 listings as low as 380.92, market price 576.32 for Line of the Light Charmer, 47. With 22 listings as low as 399.85, market price 490.42 for Black Rose. So that's something that's interesting, but let's, what is going on back here in Lightning Overdrive? Uh, okay, so that listing at the top, that was $10 shipping. So it's, they're $59. So the base price of a uh, Starlight Rare out of Lightning Overdrive, 60 times 24, 600, 1200, 240, um, $1,440 is the base price of a Starlight Rare out of Lightning Overdrive, 1440 and Lina, as well as Black Rose. Lina is holding steady, $380.92. I don't know what that market price is, why it's so ridiculously high. But considering what, about 400, you can get a play set of Lina's for the price of what it would cost to pull one at random. Same thing with Black Rose right now, but I, I believe Black Rose would be much greater value. Being able to get a play set for the price of what it will cost to pull. Wow, and Gamer Switch actually has a play set for the price of what it will cost to pull one. That's nice. And of course, guys, this is not a financial advising channel. I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. I'm just telling you guys how I look at these CCB markets. And that's uh, that's really good value for Black Rose. Which I would argue is max rarity now. Looking at that, looking at Bahulutia and Book of Lunar Eclipse and their Starlight Rare prices, Bahulutia is a solid $40 near mint first day Starlight Rare dies. 40 bucks. The base price is 1440 This is 40 bucks. That's like 5%. You could possibly buy out Bahulutia for the price of what it would cost to pull one. As Sale would say, one go home, one Super Saiyan 2. Incredible. particularly in these newer sets, there's so many different um, cards to place a bet on right now. Um, it's it's very interesting. Like, like, I just went over three of the top end cards in the set that were very cool to place a bet on. Do you come down here into Secret Rare? Um, in, the secret set, uh, in the Secret Rare area, and you have the Gallancer original print, Definer of the Herald, actually showing some appreciation. 34 listings is going 1695, marked by 1763. Amazement Administrator Arlequino does not have a reprint. TCG exclusive theme, 79 listings as low as $1.99, marked by 317. It's psychic, it's level 7 dark attribute psychic type. Okay, 2600 attack points, second special summon itself. There's something there. Is Exo Server Ascended Sages? This does have Prismatic Secret Rare now. I'd probably be looking into that. Albion the Branded Dragon has Prismatic Secret Rare. I'd be looking into that. Spring is Merrymaker, I don't believe, has a reprint. That's why it's appreciated in value as such. And Dry Trying to move at a Fafnir. 124 listings as well as 44 cents mark price 211. It is a rank one. Um, all of the Eyes of Blue spellcasters are level one. Blue Eyes is probably one of the strongest ritual-based decks out there. And you have a card that pretty much ritual summons for free, Secret Rares, as low as 44 cents. Dark Honest. 
original print secret rare, 84 listings as low as 99 cents, one point a dollar is one. Just a ridiculous amount of value, guys, back here. S Force Chase, 39 listings as low as 90 cents, one point a dollar 32. I do not believe this has a reprint. Um, 39 listings. And then Trap Chicks Color, yeah, ultra rare out of lightning overdrive. There's this amazing time taking another secret rare. It's sneak peek, ultra rare is down. Let's get off the line of Black Rose. Uh, Spring is Merry Maker does not have a reprint. As I was saying, two level four monsters. It's part of special summon from your extra deck. You can summon one Spring's monster from your deck to the graveyard. So when the special summons the Fool's Burial is a Spring and monster, it's generic. During your opponent's main or battle phase, quick effect, you can banish this card into the end phase. Then if you banish this card with two or more exceed materials, you can also send one fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard and list following the owl bag as material. And yeah, as Lil Roro just said, wow, because yeah, that's that's not bad. Um, for trying to extend into some shenanigans that people wouldn't see coming for a card that does not have a reprint. Trap Chicks Kularia does, does have a reprint, ultra rare. It has two, as a matter of fact, dropped in Lightning Overdrive, got a 2020 10 um super rare reprint, and then comes out as common in the Trap Chicks structure deck. We're going to reverse engineer this, go into the Trap Chicks structure deck because I was actually um, um in a matter of looking at this and the displays have appreciated from the 80 dollars price point that they have fell down to back up to a hundred dollars again looking at this here so it looks like i missed my opportunity to grab some unfortunately i wanted to grab at least one i try to grab at least one display of all of the I try to grab at least one display of all of the um, structure decks because they're just such good value, particularly this one. But the this this display, that eighty dollars that it fell down to, I thought it would last a little bit longer there, and I was mistaken. And I missed my chance to grab this one that has that brings you Ash, Regeki in common, Harpy's Feather Duster in common, and evenly matched as staples. So I dropped the ball and missed my chance to grab this one. Um, I think it's still better value to grab these eight for a hundred as opposed to paying for eight at fifteen because that'll run you about one twenty plus tax. So this is still better value than the individual ones. But I don't know if like I bought this if I would crack it because I normally crack these and I archive these in binders because I really like how structured decks are done. Like I know you guys have seen TX TX um, Team Samurai. When he does a, a pack opening for a structure deck, how he sniffs the cards, yes, because those cards they 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 smell special. I I concur with Team Sam on that one. People try to say he's being dramatic. No, he's not being dramatic. You open up enough structure decks sealed in different packs, you're going to smell the Yu Gi Oh. It's a, it's a real thing. And they smell nice. It's a real thing. But yeah, I might just have to bite the bullet. You pay the triple digits on this right here. It's tough, tough sled. And thankfully, the, the most recent one that we got come, came out um, is much cheaper, the Jack Atlas one. But there was also something I saw on House of Champs Market Watch this apparently spiking in value um because of the jack atlas structure 27 listings uh ultra rare i bought this i think i bought either five to seven copies for the waifu tax because this just looks it looks except i i opened up legendary door season three quite a few of these and well I, I feel like i have a nice solid 30 bucks on my hand but i opened up um quite a few of the legendary door season threes and this came in there as a common and I, when I opened up that common, um, that non-foil lore window of this card, I knew I had to get the foil version. Like as soon as I held it in my hands, I went onto the market and I grabbed the foil version. The common is sitting at about a dollar card right now, which is, it's not easy. Like I opened up, I think like three uh, sealed displays of Legendary Door season three. And I think I pulled like only a play set of the commons. And you get a lot of comments, guys. <laughs> Soul Servant, the Dark Magicians. 
nicely priced right now. Elements are a liquid soldier, even this is the even though this is the card, I don't think it's used that much in heroes. A dusty gold and malicious bane are used, and malicious bane is exceptionally powerful. I would be actually I played against that deck a couple of times at Master Duel, and they went for this card a couple of times. It's pretty hard to deal with. It has good defense, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And then it can just straight up destroy your opponent's monsters, non-targeting, that have lower attack, and then it gets an attack boost. But I will be looking at the secret rare copy for this. Like, this is way too cheap for what Malicious Bang does for the deck. If you ask me, I'll be coming in here looking at stats for this card. I can easily see this card being a $10 card. Easy. Malicious Bang. Brothers of Legend just, it, it continues to get Brothers of Legend and Crystal's Revenge. Those two Legend sets, they keep giving, guys. They really do. Like, I would want to try to, this is an exceptionally priced. This doesn't have as many Starlight Rares as the new Battles of Legend sets does, but the fact that it has two and the fact that it has a lot of other cool cards in here, oh my goodness, Ghost Games, 58. Um, boxes 47.65. They really trying to let this go. But look, you got Nibiru in here. Appreciate it. Well, the Forbidden Droplet, I would try to sell mine immediately. Like I said, I'm going to be looking to sell my Triple Tactics on top of that suit pay. Um, I need to list, like, be a little bit more competitive with that Infernoid Omenku Ultimate Rare. Infernoid Omenku Ultimate Rare. Uh, Lightly played first edge, you're starting at 22 bucks. Lightly played first edge, going up to 25. Near mint first edge at 30. So they're actually still holding strong, but I feel like I could be more competitive. And then the Sephira, another old ultimate rare, uh, Queen of Dragons. What is she looking at right now? Near mint first edge are 23 bucks. So. Still some good value, and then Magic Specter, uh, Raccoon did the. Uh, I'm, let me just look at Babuku. Did the, did the hype die down for Babuku yet? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. On Lamb, near my first ads are ten bucks. So slightly, the hype's died down slightly. They're not the forty five dollars that they were. They're closer to the twenty seven thirty dollars. So the hype has died down a little bit, but this malicious bang, guys, I would be looking at stacks for this, undoubtedly. Um, like I said, you got Nibiru appreciating the value out of Brothers of Legend for getting Droplet, which is going to get that um, 10 um, reprint. The Nibiru. Well, let's go ahead and slide back here real quick. And we ain't even looking at Dust and Gold. But we got Legendary Bullets in three box displays. Amazingly enough, these still have not appreciated, guys. 33 listings as well as 53.95, market price 55.34 for Legendary Bullets Season 3 box displays, which is arguably the best one. Fifty-three ninety-five. You can get two for a hundred, and you get not only you get dice in here, guys. You get a guaranteed secret rare, a chance to pull magician souls, and then ultra rares like malicious bane and the dust of gold. This is a really good super poly target as well, Trevor Overton. But some great value back here. Um, hold on, though. Let me try to reorient myself because I was looking at Brothers. Yeah, that's what it was. Babunku. Yeah, let's go back in here to this 
malicious bang, going to brothers. And then you had a Nibiru, 73 listeners, so 769 market price, 858. Um, that's appreciating. I don't think that's going to be in the new um, 25th anniversary ready collection, which is legitimately a month away now, guys. Like, the wait is over. It's here. In two weeks, we're going to get spoilers. Like, the wait is over. It's here. But yeah, there's definitely probably gonna be some YCS fallout. There normally always is. We'll probably cover that tomorrow, maybe. We're gonna go over the Mega 10 real quick before we get up out of here. Looking at the Mega Pack, there still hasn't been like too much greater movement. I feel like there's a lot of listings that still need to roll in. I'll probably wait because once that, in a month, when that 25th rarity anniversary collection drops, everybody's gonna drop this set. They're not gonna care about this set. And when that happens, That's when I feel like the prices are going to hit their lowest. So I would continue to wait. That's when I feel like the listings are going to hit their high. When you're going to start seeing 200 listings for cards on the first page of these prismatic secret rares. And then last but not least, the, the promos. Their listings continue to ramp up and speed dual streets of battle city i said i went about a month before coming back and looking at the seal for this i thought the seal might hit 20 bucks it definitely did not it's still 27 which is good value for itself the summon skull is overtaking the red eyes rightfully so you can get red eyes and dark magician and qcs or there's no point in getting them a speed dual secret And then you're just seeing some stand power from cards like Kaiko and Creature Swap. Of course, guys, we can't be out here all day. Hopefully, we provided some value with this live stream market watch. We're going to be getting up out of here.